Hey my loves, welcome back for another video. If you're tuning in for the first time, I'm Ashley and today we're going blonde. So today we're going to be playing in this lace wig. She comes courtesy of Eva's Wigs. Here I'm giving you a close-up of the hairline and the parting and the hair in itself. It's like a golden beautiful blonde. It's not quite 613. I personally would call it like a strawberry blonde. Um, if you want to go ahead and make it a little bit more ash toned, this is the perfect base to do so. Off the bat, I know that the wig or the lace is not my complexion and it really doesn't match which is standard so I'm gonna go in and customize it myself for starters I tried using a foundation powder and I buffed it in and as you guys can see it didn't make much of a difference I couldn't really pack it in there to help to tint the lace to my complexion so I tried an alternative which is a liquid foundation. Now I was super nervous about this just because a liquid foundation tends to come up a little bit more red when you're working with a wig that's blonde. I don't know why but it definitely does and it did. It did come up a lot more red but it still was better and it matched my complexion a little bit more than to not go ahead and tint it. So I went ahead and went with that. Another option would be to tint the lace. I was more afraid of that bleaching the hair itself because you have a little less control when you spray on a lace tint. You can also dye the lace like with a toner so there are different options you can use. This one is just very beginner friendly since we pretty much all have a foundation of some sort already on hand. Here you can see I'm going in and I'm pressing the lace for dear life. I like for my lace to be bone straight so I definitely will go in and do plenty heat passes until I get the desired look. It wasn't bad to start with but again I like mine to be bone straight and like it's coming out of the root. If you are afraid to use an electric hot comb or any kind of hot tool while the wig is on your head I'd highly recommend you do this step on the mannequin head. As you guys can see the wig is not bonded down quite yet so this is definitely an easy step you can do before you even apply your wig you can go in perfect the parting tint the lace you know um, press out the lace and hairline you can go in and style the ends of the hair that way whenever you go ahead and put the wig on you're literally just cutting off the excess lace and bonding it down and you put it off and that's pretty much the next step for me. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the excess lace. Now, I know it's coming off a little bit more red on camera, but in person, it was camouflaged with my complexion so well that it was hard for me to really see where the hairline started and finished. So as you guys can see, I'm going in and I'm cutting off the excess lace, but I definitely left a lot more than I normally would because I really could not see where the lace stopped and started. Also, I found that the lace was a little bit thicker. As you guys can see, it was a little bit more tough to get through. And just generally speaking, I find that whenever I work with blonde wigs, they are more likely to have a harder lace than those of like a natural color for some reason. I don't know why that is, but you know, just generally speaking, that is something that I've noticed over the years. So this is a glueless install. I am using an adhesive, but it's not glue. It's actually a hairspray um, that you can find at your local beauty supply. Of course, I have it linked in the description box. You can get it like in two days on Prime. So if you're interested in this, I really, really do like this one. I tried this one some time ago. I would say maybe even like a year or two ago, maybe even longer. And I really loved it then. But um, as time has progressed, I've used other products and I've gone back to this one and I really really do like it so for me when I bond my wigs down even though this isn't a real glue it's just a holding spray I do like to work in sections because it does dry pretty quick and it's just easier to get it right if you do it in sections so starting off I'll do the center and then I'll do one side and then the other side and then that works for me also I use a blow dryer whenever I started my um, you know hair journey here on YouTube I never used a blow dryer to bond the wigs down and since I've started doing that I've noticed a huge difference I do use a Dyson blow dryer feel free to use whichever one you want for some reason I do find a significant difference in the way that the wig bonds down and like the tight hold that I get when I use the Dyson I don't know what it is or why it is but I definitely will say if you do no matter what blow dryer you use use a cool setting and just let it dry like let it dry take your time this is a tedious process but you know it's definitely work it, worth it it whenever you have a nice install and it's glue free. 
So here's a look at what the hairline looks like. I feel like blonde, no matter what I do, always looks very wiggy on me. Um, once installed, it doesn't matter what the waist, the lace looks like. It doesn't matter, um, you know, how anything is, how much it's plugged. It always looks wiggy on me. So I kind of feel like you break up the hairline by adding a little bit of baby hair so that it doesn't look so boxy. And so I just separated a little bit of hair out of the wig and turned it into baby hair, including sideburns on the sides. When it comes to sideburns, when you're wearing a wig that is not matching the complexion, um, you definitely want to make sure that you have a sideburn or something that covers all your black hair. Because this is a blonde wig, if you see my black hair peeking through, that is just going to kill the whole thing. It's not going to be cute at all. So sometimes I'll do sideburns, sometimes I won't. But if I'm doing like a blonde wig, I always do sideburns or be prepared to cut off your sideburns, which I know most of you are opposed to. As you guys can see, I went ahead and did some baby hair. I do use a mousse opposed to an edge control. But again, when I'm working with blonde wigs, I kind of just feel like the lace and the texture of the hair just works a little bit more different. For example, with the blonde hair, it just remains a little bit more straight, which go figure. Um, but I just prefer that I use a edge control because whenever I start off with the mousse, what you guys see here, it'll form, but it won't form as much as I want. So I kind of lay it down with a little bit of edge control and I'm good to go. Also, I'm going to set it by adding a scarf a little bit later and you'll see a huge difference once I do that. Now there is, um, this one definitely will work nice as a ponytail, but keep in mind that your edges cannot be out if they're not blonde. So be sure to bond it down in the back, or you can use bobby pins to like pin it down so that it goes over all of your kitchen. That way it just looks very, very, very smooth. All the products I use to lay this wig down are linked in the description box. I love to use a wax to, you know, melt the lace and make everything look smooth and flat and get rid of flyaways. And then I like to add a little holding spray sometimes to add, guess what, hold. <laughs> now I'm going to go in and press the ends. Um, honestly, I didn't add a heat protectant. Normally I would, but sometimes I kind of feel like when I have a lighter color hair, especially blonde, for some reason when you add like a little bit of oil or a little bit of heat protectant, it tends to make the hair look a little bit more oily. So you have to be careful and use like just a little bit, almost like instead of spraying it on the wig, spray it in your hands, rub it together and evenly distribute it so that you can get that heat protectant just be careful not to make the wig look too oily and then after that I went off camera and I added a scarf and you guys can see how the wig kind of molds to my head no matter how much I went ahead and um, like flat ironed it or used a hot comb nothing works better than just a good old scarf now one of our final steps is going to be to go ahead and perfect the lace. Now in hindsight, I wish I would have just left it like this because this wasn't that bad. But I put out, pulled out this oldie but goodie eyeshadow palette and boom. Look how I messed up. I messed up by adding too much. So I'm going to blend it out a little bit. But honestly, I did like this color more than the color that I had on the lace before. The color I had on the lace before was a little bit too orange. So I used a darker eyeshadow to kind of cover it up but that orange color still poked through beneath and around that so if I would have just only used this and not that foundation I feel like we would be good like it, it actually doesn't look bad but again like around that you can see that orange that flares out around it that is the foundation that I use and it's just really no coming back from that so essentially I'm going to just enjoy this wig for a day or two and then I'll be able to remove the wig wash it and then I probably will go ahead and just tint the lace the old-fashioned way um, that way I don't have to worry about adding any powder 
So for this video, we're going to just wear the hair straight. I love the way it looked in that way, but I kind of just want to just play it up and see what it will look like in other styles. And so I decided to pin it up a little bit and I like that. And then I also decided to do a half up, half down with like a ponytail that wasn't really revealing too much. And I liked it, but it did give me a little bit more wiggy vibes because I feel like my braids weren't flat enough, but this is the finished look. Okay guys, so I'm officially done with this look. I went ahead and pinned it up in the back just with a little quick ponytail, just because I kind of felt like the straight was not necessarily boring, but kind of boring, I guess you can say. So this one did come from Ava Wigs, and of course the packaging is the same as usual. Your wig comes in a plastic bag like so. And then inside you get your, um, what are these called? bobby pins <laughs> and then you also get some tan wig caps and then you also get a wide tooth comb so so if you are an og you remember this eyeshadow palette i completely forgot about it i was looking for some eyeshadows yesterday and i almost threw it away because i was like when did i ever use this eyeshadow palette i don't even remember using this on my eyes and then it dawned on me i never use this on my eyes for real i use this mainly as a um palette for my wigs and it made me realize like I want to go back to using stuff like that because like I said before when I use different color wigs even just different color lace it requires a different color powder like not every wig that I use looks good with my go-to lace tint products if that makes any sense so with this one I would have used the darkest one I don't know how it's picking up on camera, but I kind of felt like it was going to be a little too red in person. This is a little bit more red and this is a little bit more cool. I kind of feel like on the camera this looks a little bit more red, but this came out perfect. You got to see when I hit it right here and I had put too much. If you don't, if you didn't see me do that, it wouldn't look crazy, but because you see me do it, you can kind of see it. So I'll just take and play with it and blend it out again. I'm going to have to just go in and wash the wig and start fresh so that that underlying orange will go away. So majority of the people who are watching these videos right now, if you're watching, you're probably either beginner or intermediate looking for tips and tricks to help you navigate through this wig thing so i like to let you guys see my mistakes live i'm gonna go ahead and do some b-roll and take some pictures with this wig because all in all i like the way it came out like on camera you guys are getting more red and it is a little bit red and i can see that in the camera but like i have a huge mirror right here and it's not as bad in person as it is on camera if that makes sense so let me know what you think about this color. I might just take it down because I feel like this is making me have like big head vibes. I kind of want to um, put some curls in it, but I might just save that for another day. Or maybe I'll add some layers to it. Not sure quite yet, but I kind of like it teased, funky, and fun. So maybe I'll just leave it down and like add some braids throughout. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think of this one. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, I would love it if you stick around and watch a couple more videos. I have hundreds, if not thousands at this point. If you're new to my channel, I'm Ashley. It was great that you lasted this long. Please go ahead and subscribe. It would help me out so much. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for holding it down with me, girl. I am so grateful and appreciative for all of you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Smooches.